In my transformations video, I covered rotation, but I didn't go in depth. I wanted to make this video to explain how trigonometry is used in game development. This video is a general video, so you'll be able to learn the basics of trigonometry in game development no matter what language you use. For examples, I'll be using Python since it's what I use and it looks like pseudocode. If you're coming from my Pygame tutorials, there's a couple things I'll be discussing at the end of this video in relation to that, so stay for that if you use Pygame. I also feel that it's important to point out that this video will focus on trigonometry in 2D games. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get started. I can't jump into trigonometric functions right away since some prerequisite knowledge here would be very useful. Pretty much everyone is familiar with degrees as a measurement for angles and most people have at least heard of radians. It's important to keep in mind that both degrees and radians are measurements for angles. They're just different scales. While full circle is 360 degrees, it's also 2 pi radians. This means that half a circle is pi radians, which is approximately 3.14. A quarter of a circle is half of pi. Knowing the common radian values can be very useful in game development because most trigonometric functions in programming either take in radians as a parameter or return values in radians. It's super easy to convert between radians and degrees though. Knowing that half of a circle is 180 degrees or pi radians can be used to write formulas for conversion. To convert degrees to radians, you just divide degrees by 180 and multiply it by pi. To convert radians to degrees, you just divide the radians by pi and multiply it by 180. However, most languages have functions you can use to do these conversions. One last important thing to note about angles is that an angle of zero in mathematics starts pointing right and rotates counterclockwise as you increase it. Now let's jump into trigonometric functions. There are a bunch of them, but for basic game development purposes, there are three that are frequently used. The three I'm talking about are sine, cosine, and inverse tangent. In order to not get the functions mixed up, just remember that sine is used for y, cosine is used for x, and tangent is used for both. Note that I'm talking about tangent now and not inverse tangent. They're related and I'll go over that in a bit. While you can remember sine as being for the y-axis, the function itself takes in an angle, typically in radians, and returns a number from negative 1 to 1. When visualizing trigonometric functions, you need to think of a right triangle. The angle of one of the corners is the angle the trigonometric functions take in. The sine function itself takes in that angle, which is referred to as theta, and returns to the vertical side of the triangle divided by the hypotenuse. Since this is a ratio, the size of the triangle does not matter for the output. The side of the right triangle can't be longer than the hypotenuse. That's why the output range for sine is negative 1 to 1. So imagine that the angle is 45 degrees or 1 fourth pi radians. The vertical side in a triangle is now the square root of 2 divided by 2, or around 0 0.71 of the length of the hypotenuse. Imagine that we put in 0 radians or 0 degrees for our sine function. If theta is 0 radians, your triangle becomes a line and there is no vertical line anymore. That means that the vertical side now has a length of 0 units, so the sine of 0 returns 0. Now imagine that we use the theta of 90 degrees, or 1 half pi radians. The triangle is now just a vertical line with no horizontal line. The hypotenuse is now the same length as the vertical side, so the function returns 1. If you remember, I previously stated that the sine function returns a number from negative 1 to 1 and you may be wondering how you end up with negative 1. It's important to remember that the hypotenuse of the triangle is always positive. In game development, it's handy to think of the measurement of distance when thinking of the hypotenuse. The sides of the triangle can be thought of as a change in x and y, which can be either positive or negative. So now let's go back to our sine function and put in 270 degrees, or 1.5 pi radians. We now get another vertical line, but this time it's going in the downward direction. The change in the y-axis is the same as the length of the hypotenuse, but the change in the y-axis is now negative since it goes down. If you divide a negative number by its positive, you get a negative, so the result of the function is negative 1. Now that we've covered one trigonometric function, the rest are easy. Cosine is the horizontal side divided by the hypotenuse. If you remember what I said earlier, sine is for y, cosine is for x, and tangent is for both. Also remember that I said it's nice to think of the hypotenuse as a distance, and the sides of the triangle as the changes in the x-axis and the changes in the y-axis. Using this knowledge, we can write some code for one of the most basic uses of trigonometry in game development. We can make something move in a specific direction based on an angle. This code is in Python, but it should be readable to anyone. 
We add the cosine of the angle times the distance to the x position of the entity and the sine of the angle times the distance to the y position of the entity. Let's visualize a triangle again. Using the trigonometric functions, we use the values for theta and the length of the hypotenuse to get the change in the x-axis and y-axis. At this point, you might be wondering why I multiplied by the distance. If you look at the relationship between the functions and their outputs again, you'll see that the hypotenuse is on the bottom. If you multiply that ratio by the bottom value, it cancels out and you get whatever the top value was. If you don't multiply by anything, it's like assuming the hypotenuse or distance is 1. In our case, the top value in the ratio for the sine function is effectively the change of y, and for the cosine function, it's the change in x. If you try to use this code, you'll likely notice something odd though. If you put in 45 degrees, you'll find that your entity will be moving down into the right, even though 45 degrees is up into the right. This is because rendering in 2D doesn't typically use the same coordinate system as normal math. In 2D games, the top left of the display is typically the point zero zero, and the x increases as you go to the right, while the y increases as you go down. The main difference here is that the y is flipped compared to normal mathematics. With the y-axis being flipped, increasing angles effectively goes clockwise. This means that there are two ways to correct for the differences between the coordinate systems. The first one is to put a negative sign in front of your angles since that effectively switches to counterclockwise. The second option is to put a negative in front of any y values that come out of the sine function. This is the one that seems more straightforward and easily understandable to most people since it just flips the changes in the y from sine to the coordinate system in computer graphics. If you're looking to to get into more advanced trigonometry for games, you'll need to be paying a lot of attention to the ratios that the functions return rather than thinking of sine as just for y and of cosine as just for x. The ratios themselves allow you to do a lot of stuff if you pay attention to them. Next up is tangent. Tangent returns the vertical side of the triangle divided by the horizontal side. I said that the third important function was actually inverse tangent though. All trigonometric functions have inverses. In mathematics, inverted functions have a specific meaning. It's effectively reversing the function so that the number you typically get out of the function is what you put in and the number you normally put in is what you get out. So if you normally put in an angle into the tangent function and it gives you the ratio of the vertical side to the horizontal side, then the inverse of the function is where you put in the ratio and you get an angle. Due to the nature of ratios, all of the inverted trigonometric functions have specific angles they can put out that aren't equal to the full 360 degrees. In the case of tangent, it only returns negative 90 to 90 degrees. If you try to input the ratio negative 1 to negative 1 for inverse tangent, you'll find that the negatives cancel out and the ratio is, is just a ratio of 1 to 1. This is the case for all inverse functions. Similarly, the ratio of negative 1 to 1 is not distinguishable from 1 to negative 1. This means that there are two possible angles for every ratio for the inverse trigonometric functions. You must account for this when doing mathematical operations where you want the angle based on x and y values themselves and not just whatever the ratio is. In the case of tangent, since its range is negative 90 to 90 degrees, you just add 180 degrees to the output if x is negative. The inverse functions actually have another name that is frequently used in programming. They're called the arc functions. In Python, you can get them by just putting the letter A in front of the normal function names. Python actually has an inverse tangent-like function that takes in x and y values instead of a ratio so that it can output the full 360 degrees. It's math.atan2. Check whatever language you're using too. It may have a similar function. If not, you can write it yourself with the example I just gave a moment ago. There's one last important thing to note that comes as a result of ratios. Ratios are written as a number divided by another number but you can't divide by zero. You'll need to make sure you handle those edge cases where your input for the inverse functions has a zero as the divisor. Now that we've covered inverse tangent or arc functions, I can cover another super common use for trigonometry in game development. In a lot of cases, you'll want to get the angle from one point to another. This angle can be used to make an entity move towards another entity using the code from the previous example with sine and cosine functions. As I've already discussed, the inverse or arc functions take in the ratio and return the angle, usually in radians. To get the angle from one point to another, you need to find the distance from the first point to the second in both the x 
x-axis and the y-axis. Next, you form the ratio and you dump it into the arctangent function which spits out an angle. While it's super easy to get the x and y distances to use for your ratios with the trigonometric functions, the hypotenuse is a bit more difficult to get. You'll need a formula you probably already know, although you may not have noticed the use for it in this context. It's the distance formula. It's the square root of x and y distances squared and added together. It converts x and y distances into a unified distance. There's just a few more things to cover. If you've ever heard of secant, cosecant, and cotangent, those are just one divided by sine, cosine, and tangent respectively. And of course all of those have inverse functions. Generally you don't need to think about these in game development. Typically these come up naturally in the form of one divided by sine and the others. There's a lot of stuff you can use trigonometry for in games. You're not always working with angles and distances. I frequently use the trigonometric functions for visual effects since the functions make a nice wave-like shape when graphed. That's a whole other topic though, so I won't go into the details there. Now for an important note for Pygame since that's what most of my tutorials focus on. In Pygame, rotation of images follows the typical mathematical form even though the y-axis is flipped. This means that Pygame uses the opposite system for rotations of images. So if you're putting a negative in front of your angles before using the trigonometric functions on them, make sure you don't put it in front of the angle you put in the Pygame image rotations. If you're flipping all the y values coming out of the sine function, all of of your angles should be fine and you should be able to use the image rotation as expected. In my case I typically take the lazy route and just work with rotation measurements going clockwise and I'll stick negatives in front of angles when using image rotations so that they can ro also rotate clockwise. Thanks for watching and I hope I'll see you all in the next video.